In this video, I just want to talk about how to get the most out of Studicata Bar Review. And actually, it's pretty simple, right? We have seven rules up here on the board with the idea being if you follow these seven rules, we think you're going to get the most out of your bar review experience here at Studicata, or at least at minimum, you know you're using the program as it was intended to be used, or you're using the program in the way that we designed it to be used, which is really important, right? Just making sure we're all on the same page here. And again, we touched on a lot of these topics in our last video, so I'm not gonna rehash too much, but again, I think it is important to really solidify some rules for us all to follow here. Now, of course, rule number one, and we can just jump into it, rule number one kind of starts with a catch-all exception though, right? Which is really important. If, rule one, if you believe that changes could be made to this program to better fit your needs, make them, right? This is really important. Ultimately, I believe that the best preparation method for any test is going to be self-study, right? I want you in the driver's seat as much as possible, right? I don't want you in an autonomous car with some robot driving you around, right, that you're blindly following. I want you in the driver's seat as much as possible, right? If you're here, if you're in bar exam preparation, I know you're a smart person, right? It's not easy to get to the bar exam, right? So I know, I trust you enough to use reason and make reasonable decisions as you work through bar exam preparation and we ultimately remember it's all about point accumulation it's all about ROI right the return on your time investment so if you're doing something where you feel like you're not getting a good return on your time investment we don't want you to do that right so change it make changes to the program where you see fit right and the story I often tell here with this first rule is just to give a little bit more context, goes back to my days eons ago, it seems like, when I was a 1L in law school, right? So I show up to law school, I know nothing about law school, I don't have any family that's lawyers or anything like that. I really have no idea what to expect. So I'm taking everything at its word, right? I'm really listening to what everybody tells me. And so you show up to orientation and all the professors and everyone, what do they tell you is the most important thing, right? You gotta read and brief every case before class. Like to have success in law school, how do you do it? You gotta read all the cases, you gotta brief the cases, you gotta be prepared in class, right? This is what I heard over and over and over again. So what do I do, right? I show up as a 1L, I'm showing up to my 1L contracts, torts, whatever all my classes were, and I'm reading every case, I'm briefing it carefully, I'm like the best case reader and briefer ever, right? Because this is what everyone's told me, this is how you have success. Well, what happens? Of course, we get to the midterms, I show up to take my midterm and just like tank it. I have no idea what's going on. I'm like, what is this? I know all the cases. I don't know how to apply it though to this fact pattern. You know, I don't know what I'm doing, right? So of course I bombed this thing, bombed the midterm. And I feel like all the, you know, all my classmates knew what was going on way more. I felt like they were talking and like, you know, whatever. I'm like, I'm getting left in the dust. So what do I do, right? I'm like, well, I gotta make changes. I hear what these professors are telling me about reading briefing cases, but it's obviously not working. I'm not getting any ROI on that, right? I just took this midterm and got killed, right? I don't know what's going on. So of course I change everything that I'm doing. What do I do, right? What do I find? I go to the professors, I'm like, hey, you got any old questions I can look at, any old exams I can work through. Work through the old exams, take them to the professor, right? Get feedback on that. So I start doing active review, right? Doing practice questions and reviewing them. And of course I get to final exams and I do great, right? I think I got the highest score in at least one class, maybe two classes. I know I was in the top 10% my first semester. So ultimately, right, I went from kind of, you know, bad on the midterm to like top 10% really quick and it was because I made the changes that needed to be made. I knew that reading and briefing cases wasn't giving me ROI. It was a huge time investment sitting there reading and briefing every case very detailed, you know, but wasn't giving me any return on point yield on the actual exams. So I was like, you know, can't keep doing this, made the changes, ended up with a great result. So. I don't think you're gonna see anything that extreme in bar exam preparation, right? We're not gonna have you do anything that's, you know, not important, like reading and briefing cases is in law school to a large degree. Um, but ultimately, you know, if there's small changes, if there's little things that's going on, you know, maybe torts is assigned one day. You see you have a torts practice question set coming up and you're like, I don't need to do any more torts questions. I have this, I need to do contracts or whatever, right? Make those types of changes, right? Now you don't wanna just completely, you know, toss the program in the trash, right? And be like, ah, you know, rule one, I can change anything, right? You know, again, 
be reasonable. I'm putting trust in you guys here. I know you're smart. You know, within reason, make the changes that you need to make, but don't necessarily use this as a excuse, you know, to throw away the entire playbook that we're giving you, right? We have a lot of experience here, but the idea is if there's slight changes, if there's even, you know, moderate changes that need to be made, feel comfortable to make them. I, again, firmly believe that the best way to approach the bar exam is an approach of self-study, self-assessment, right? Because ultimately I know there's no way to make a one size fits all bar review program that's best for everyone, right? Every person's different. Every one of you watching this has different techniques you use to learn. You have different ways that you like to memorize things. You have some are gonna be audio, some are going to be visual, right? Everyone's different. Some people love flashcards, some people hate flashcards, right? Everybody's just different, right? So you don't wanna use flashcards if you hate flashcards, right? Make the changes that you need, adapt yourself accordance with that ROI, right? And if you remember in our last video, that's why we talked a lot about ROI. If you keep, if you constantly focus on this, right, you're going to be in good shape. You know, you're always thinking about what's my return, you know, how many points is this going to result in on the bar exam and the amount of time I'm using on this topic, right? It's all about that return of point yield on your investment of time. As long as you keep this in mind, you'll be in good shape, right? But that's rule number one. You know, if you believe that changes could be made to the program to better fit your individualized needs, go ahead and make them. Feel confident to do that. We want you in the driver's seat as much as possible, right? Rule number two, do not spend more than four hours of any given day on passive review, right? We're gonna talk a lot more about allocating your time in our next videos, right? We're gonna talk a lot about the course schedule and really allocating time. But the idea here is, remember, we talked a lot about prioritizing active review over passive review. Passive review being things like reading outlines, drilling flashcards, watching video lectures, right? All of that type of stuff. Anything that's not sitting down and doing practice questions and reviewing them, you should really limit to a maximum of four hours on any given day for lots of reasons, you know, but one of the big reasons is, again, that people don't really think about with passive review, it's going to have eventually diminishing returns. Remember we talked about the fact that you're a human being, right? And what happens when you start to read an outline for more than four hours, right? It's really hard to stay laser focused on passive review for more than four hours a day, like sitting down and just watching eight hours of video lecture or sitting down and watching you know, whatever, reading outlines, flashcards for long periods of time can start to get really difficult. So almost anything over four hours, I know that there's going to be a level of diminishing returns there. Again, rule number one, some people may be different, but for the most part, right, anything over four hours, I do think is going to have that diminishing returns. And ultimately, I think you're starting to really lose that ROI, right? Your time would probably be better spent actually just sitting there and doing practice questions than spending another you know, hour on top of the four you just spent reading an outline, right? Again, don't forget rule number one, right? So all of this you should think of as almost really, really strong recommendations. But again, there could be situations where right? you can always create exceptions to any rule. So that's why we have rule number one. But moving past rule two to rule three, prioritize your passive review time in accordance with potential point yield, right? This should be really obvious. We talked about this a lot in our last video, right? That's what this is here for, right? Our TAC outline with all the priority meters, color-coded priority meters in it. Right? Anytime you're sitting down to do passive review, Right, we want to make sure that you're really focusing that time on areas that are going to yield points, right? It's all about ROI. Because a lot of times, and what this rule is really getting at, rule number three, is trying to limit the situation where students are just going deep into the weeds on stuff. Because, you know, that's it's easy in the bar exam. It tests so much stuff. There's so many areas of law, so many details and nuances. It's real easy to get lost in the weeds, right? And really go down paths of research on topics that really aren't going to yield a whole lot of points. So you always want to be mindful of this. And anytime you're in passive review, kind of keep in the back of your mind, you know, am I getting ROI on this right now? Am I focusing on something that's going to give me points or am I getting lost in the weeds here, right? So that's why we say on rule number three, we always wanna make sure that we're prioritizing our passive review time in accordance with potential point yield as much as possible. Again, a great resource for this is the attack outline. There's literally color-coded rule priority meters next to each rule in here. It will show you directly exactly what to prioritize in each subject. 
Also, there will be lots of frequency data that's included in your materials. You'll see all of that in a different module, right? So you can use the data, you can use the attack outline. Just make sure that you are prioritizing your passive read time in accordance with potential point yield as much as possible. And again, the caveat here is, Again, everything in moderation. You can get too obsessed with the data, right? I've seen some students really stress over, you know, well, this rule has a 0.8 percentage point higher frequency than this rule, so I'm going to, you know, when you start getting into it that deep, right, it can get easy. Now you're spending too much time worrying about the data rather than just sitting there and studying, right? So again, it's all about ROI. You don't want to waste time you know, worrying about the data on small percentage points, right? That's literally a waste of your time, right? You want to think about the big picture, guys, right? Again, everything in moderation, be reasonable, let common sense prevail, right? I know you're all smart. If you're watching this, I know you're smart, right? Just constantly go back to it. Rule number four, right? Moving on. Take as much time as you need to review practice questions only after you complete the practice questions under bar exam conditions. Right? This is really important, right? And we talked about this a lot in our last video. We want to make sure every single practice question set you do, whether it's multiple choice, essays, performance tests, we want you to do it at least once under timed conditions, under bar exam conditions with the timer and no notes in front of you. So you know what that feels like. And again, we talked about all the reasons why in our last video, but it's really important to build that internal clock so you know what it feels like on bar exam test day itself. Now, the important part of rule number four though is while we want you to complete the practice questions, always your first time under bar exam conditions with that clock, with the timer and no notes in front of you. After you're done, right, we want you to take as much time as you need to review those practice questions, going over the answer explanations, right? It's really important, right? Don't worry about the clocks and timers and note rule when you're reviewing, right? We want you to take as much time as you need and take all the notes that you need to review those practice questions thoroughly, right? Because that's where all the gains come from. Remember, just doing practice questions, completing them is almost worthless. Where all of your gains are going to come from, or the vast majority, is from reviewing the completed practice questions, ripping apart the fact patterns, wrestling with it, really trying to see exactly what you did right, exactly what you did wrong. Right, that's where the gains are going to come from. And we want you to take as much time as you need to do that, right? Because that's your highest ROI activity, right? So spend all the time you want reviewing, but only after you do complete the practice questions under bar exam conditions. We do want to make sure that you at least sit down one time for each set that is assigned and do it under bar exam conditions because it is important, remember, to build that internal clock, right? Get used to taking the bar exam. And we want you doing that from day one. Right, rule number five and rule number six really are just about defining what we mean by reviewing completed practice questions, right? The extent to what your goal should be when you sit down to review practice questions after you complete a set, whether it's multiple choice questions or an essay, rule five and six are really about, okay, what is your goal when you sit down to review completed practice question sets, right? So rule number five for MBE practice questions, for the multiple choice questions, right? Review the answer explanations until you fully understand why each answer choice is correct or incorrect, right? So the goal with any multiple choice question is going to be, you're gonna go through it, you're gonna do it under the timed conditions, and then you go back and you're going to review the set, right? When you go back to review the set, a lot of times students skip questions that they got right. They're like, oh, you know, number six I got right, number whatever. It's like, I'm not gonna really review these as much. I'll take a glance at it, but I'm not going to really review it. Right, that can be really damaging because you might've gotten it right, but based on the wrong reasoning. Right, you wanna make sure that your reasoning for each question is 100% sound. And the way you do that is by making sure you understand fully why every answer choice is correct or incorrect. So if number seven, the answer is C, the correct answer is C, well, of course you wanna know why is the correct answer C, but you also wanna know why A, B, and D are incorrect answer choices, right? You wanna be able to fully explain why each choice is either correct or incorrect. If you can do that for all the questions that we assign, if that's your goal, that's what you're striving towards, 
right? When you get through the hundreds and hundreds of questions that we assign and you know the reasoning, that legal reasoning behind each question, you're going to be in great shape when you get to the bar exam. You're going to be an MBE machine if you truly are reviewing the answer explanations that thoroughly. You're ripping apart the questions enough to know exactly why each answer choice is either correct or incorrect. Right? That's really going to force you to think about that legal reasoning, which is how you get multiple choice questions right. It's knowing the reasoning, right? So that's why rule number five is really important, right? That's gonna be one of your absolute highest ROI activities. Rule number six deals with MEE practice questions, right? The essay portion. Here, you wanna review those explanations, right? The legal analyses that we give you, those breakdowns of each essay, until you feel confident that you could write a passing essay on similar fact patterns, right? The idea here is if you saw a similar fact pattern on the bar exam, you'd be confident that you could write a passing essay. So you want to rip apart that essay. You want to rip apart each sentence of the fact pattern. Really think about you know, why did the bar examiners include this fact? Why was this there? What was this paragraph about? You know, how would I handle this, right? And really that's all going to come from reviewing those answer explanations, those legal analyses that we get from the National Conference of Bar Examiners, where they're going to say, look, this is how you got points. This was point one, point two, point three. This was 15% of the essay, 25% of the essay, 30%. This is exactly what the issue was this is what we were looking for right it's gonna lay it all out right and you're gonna want to go over that rip it apart front to back and really make sure that you're confident hey if I saw a fact pattern that looked like this on the bar exam I'd be really confident when I'm approaching it right that's rule number six Finally, our final rule here, rule number seven, is to prioritize reviewing answer explanations over completing more practice questions. Remember, we touched on this a lot at this point. The idea here is a lot of times, from my experience, right, students can get really antsy and just wanna go, 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 and just complete as many practice questions as possible, right? It's all, they're just like, hey, it's about completing more questions. Go, 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 right? And then rather than taking the time that's needed to sit down and really review those questions thoroughly, Early, going over and making sure you understand why each answer choice is correct and incorrect. The and focus comes for students who are just antsy on, you know what, I'm just gonna quickly review and focus more on completing more questions, seeing more questions, exposing myself to more questions. So there just becomes this mentality to just go, 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 and just keep doing more and more and more practice questions. But then the sacrifice is often, well, you're not really reviewing those answer explanations as thoroughly as you should. Rule number seven is just a reminder, always, always prioritize reviewing answer answer explanations over simply completing more practice questions. But with that, guys, that's our seven rules. If you follow these rules, I'm really confident that you are at minimum going to be using the program as it's intended to be used. I really think, though, if you follow these seven rules, that's how you're going to get the most out of your Studicata bar review experience. So with that, in our next video, we can kind of get more into the course schedule and allocating your time. But until then, guys, I wish you all the absolute best, and I'll see you at our next video.